Um, so Anne just asked me to sort of prepare just sort of a brief overview of um, where we're at in terms of environmental environmental land management schemes or ELMS as it's known and the landscape recovery pilot which the Northeast Cotswold Farm Cluster successfully um, were accepted for. Um, so I'm just going to sort of set the scene in terms of sort of agriculture and where we're at in the ag transition as well. Um, as I know in a previous meeting some um, members of this group wanted to sort of just understand that for a bit of context um, and then just go through um, where we're up to really. Um, so just to set the scene, um, there was huge changes post Brexit. So under the European Union, um, many farmers and landowners benefited from agricultural subsidies. Um, this was provided by the Common Agricultural Policy and it was under two pillars. So there were direct pillars um, under pillar one and these payments were, as long as you met the greening requirements, um, payments based on acreage. Um, and in the UK, these were provided through the basic payment scheme or BPS which some of you may have heard of. Um, the other pillar was only around 20% of the common agriculture, agricultural policy budget and this provided support for farmers and rural businesses for extra delivery so this could be in terms of environmental benefits so looking at flood risk mitigations um, or improving farm efficiency so using less pesticides or working on your um, workability. Um, so these were provided, by example, with country stewardship schemes, um, but this was a much lower percentage in terms of environmental schemes in the budget than it is now. Um, Post-Brexit, the plan um, was really looking at public money for public goods. Um, so this was really reinvesting um, in the farming environment um, and providing that for the wider economy and wider social benefit as well. Um, so this led to what we're in now, which is the path to sustainable farming, the agricultural transition or ag transition as it's known. Um, so the sort of biggest factor which is affecting farmers at the moment is the decline of BPS payments. So these are being phased out um, by delinked payments. Um, so farmers are given a reference period of 2020 to 2022 of to record their acreage and these payments which are acreage based are going to phase out and decline slowly um, up into 2027 um, throughout the agricultural transition. So this is just sort of to set the scene in the context of what sort of farmers are sort of up against at the moment. Um, so sort of as a worked example for an average 150 acre farm, 150 hectare farm, in 2020 they might have been receiving £34,200 um, through BPS. And as you can see on the sort of sliding scale, um, it's decreasing um, from say £92 an acre, 86, 74, then to 61, and all the way down to zero um, income will be received by 2028. So this is a huge sort of factor um, which is really affecting farm business and they're really having to look at their resilience um, as we're going forward. So this can mean for some they're looking at diversifying, uh, they might be looking at developing land um, for housing, they might be looking at holiday cottages, more value added products, integrating livestock, changing their arable rotation. Some might be looking to leave farming. Um, some might be looking at contract farming their land and just becoming a landowner rather than the actual manager. Um, but many are looking at where they can make up for this loss of income through BPS by environmental schemes. Um, so just to touch on what's available at the moment. Um, so countryside stewardship mid-tier is our flagship scheme essentially for catchment sensitive farming. Um, so this is a five year agreement um, and they can benefit from receiving payments for land management based options and uh, options for capital grants and options. It's a competitive scheme, um, but it's sort of guided by CSF um, and it's a really important scheme, I think, and will be our main tool and another tool going forward into ELMS, which I'll explain later on. Um, another scheme we have available is country stewardship higher tier. Um, this is a more bespoke and more ambitious scheme. Um, so it can be a five or 10 year agreement um, with a more tailored range of land management options to fit the particular farm in more detail. Um, the farmers benefit from a natural England advisor working with them on a one on one basis. Um, again, it's competitive entry and again, there is also options for funding for capital items and infrastructure. We also have a country stewardship standalone capital grant. Um, this is expanded, so we're looking at 
historically water quality items. So we're looking at rainwater harvesting and various things like that. But we now consider um, natural flood management in one of the themes that we can deliver on. So looking at woody leaky dams, um, similar to some of the work that the ECP has been doing. Uh, we're looking at boundaries and we're looking at improving air quality as well. Um, these are three year agreements. And as of last week, um, there's no longer a ceiling of £20,000 for capital grants. This is now um, been risen by quite a considerable amount and is sort of working on a more individual farm basis as well. Um, there are also the wildlife offers. These are quite good for farmers who aren't entirely sure what they can deliver on. So these are a prescriptive range of options and they're a five year agreement as well. Um, so just sort of to run through sort of the timeline of where we're at sort of in the year in terms of delivery. Um, so I'll just put these up. So the higher tier window for farmers is open as of the 7th of February and next week the mid tier window and the wildlife offer window will be open as well. Um, just to sort of highlight that um, the capital grant and the higher tier capital grant window is open all year. This is a rolling window so farmers are able to apply at a more convenient time for them. So where CSF might get involved in countryside stewardship, um, so we offer and to signpost farmers to practical solutions. So we're looking at funding capital items and infrastructure through countryside stewardship, um, which can make a difference to their farm business and therefore resilience as well. Um, so this might be looking at rainwater harvesting. Um, a lot of issues in dirty and clean water separation can be solved quite simply just by collecting rainwater off of roofs and storing it appropriately, preventing it from rushing through the farmyard, collecting slurry, collecting chemicals and ending up in our rivers. Um, we also look at roofing silage clamps and slurry lagoons, buffer strips across the holding, introducing cover crops, um, ensuring that our rivers are fenced off from livestock and better farm track management. So CSF is involved in a wide variety of ways, so I won't go through these all, but this just gives an example of how much our sort of remit and ability to advise farms um, has really expanded recently. Um, so just to touch through ELMS, um, so the environmental land management schemes are now our leading schemes. Um, so these are split into two, into three tiers, essentially. Um, so the sustainable farming incentive is the first tier. This is meant to be entry level. All farms across England are able to enter into SFI. Um, then we did have local nature recovery. Um, just to update you all, this has been replaced with Countryside Stewardship Plus um, or Evolve, as it's known. And then the broadest and most ambitious level of ELMS is landscape recovery. So I'll just go into these on, on a bit more detail. Um, so sustainable farming incentives, SFI, are three year agreements. Um, you're able to apply entirely online and these are annually reviewed. Um, these are on a farm by farm basis. So there are a variety of standards which a farm is able to apply for um, and you can add to these standards as you go on. Um, and there aren't any harsh fines. We're working more coherently with the RPA um, to look at how they're working on their inspections as well. So it's meant to be entry level, um, very buildable as a scheme. Um, so the standards which are available at the moment, uh, we have the arable and horticultural soil standard, improved grass and soil standard and a management payment. Um, so your soil standards are at two levels. So there's an introductory payment and an intermediate payment, and these reflect the level of actions and ambitions of what you're doing within those standards. Um, announced at the start of the year is also a management payment. Um, so this is given to you, to a farmer, regardless of what standards he's entered into to cover the administrative costs of entering into SFI. So it's 20 pounds a hectare, up to 50 hectares of land entered. So you can receive um, up to 1,000 pounds just to cover your administrative costs. And that was really just to attract more people into SFI essentially. Um, so a more recent announcement was that we will be having more standards entering the mix. Um, and this is really important because we need to broaden that offer that we were providing to farmers. Um, so we're now looking at nutrient management, integrated pest management, hedgerow standards, low and no input grassland, improved grassland standards and an arable and horticultural land standard. Um, we have quite a lot of information about these already, but we're waiting for full details in the summer. Um, CS Evolve, the mid-tier of ELMS, um, is essentially a improvement on the current mid-tier and higher tier schemes, sort of amalgamating. Um, and the idea is that eventually we'll be able to offer CS and SFI in an integrated service. Um, so this is a really flexible scheme. It's looking at collaboration and a coordinated approach. 
so working with farm clusters like I'll touch on um, across your neighbours across in your local area looking at localised nature recovery um, to support your climate and environmental aims um, so we've had some detail on this, but again, we're waiting for a huge announcement in the summer. So we expect that around 30 additional actions will be available by the end of 2024. Um, and sort of examples of what might be available in this scheme. So for anyone who's familiar with the Forestry Commission, um, their England Woodland Creation Offer, that's sort of what we're looking at, a sort of collaborative approach, which is looking at the extra environmental services that are being offered on farm. Um, so to touch on landscape recovery and just to talk about the North East Cotswold Farm Cluster, um, we had a great event yesterday at Dunthrop. Um, I don't know if many of you were there, I saw some of you there, um, but that was brilliant. We had over 100 um, different farmers and stakeholders there um, to go through sort of the natural capital investment side. Um, of what we're looking at in landscape recovery um, but to introduce sort of the cluster um, it formed around 2020 and it was sort of facilitated by Countryside Stewardship Facilitation Fund and it's really been driven by the landowners and that's what I find you know really inspiring it's by farmers and for farmers um, so numbers wise at the moment we're looking at I think it's actually over 120 farms are currently in the cluster um, so they cover around 34,000 600 hectares plus um, and that's over the even load and the windrush also part of the Cherwell. Um, we're obviously very lucky to have partners such as the ECP on board, the Cotswolds AOMB, the Floodplain Meadows Partnership, Freshwater Habitats Trust, Agroecology, there's <coughs> just so many to, to mention. Um, the cluster itself is involved in many projects so they were able to receive um, natural environment investment readiness fund funding um, and this is in partnership with Oxbury and Rothamsted um, and it's looking at how we can facilitate private finance and natural capital on farm through 10 pilot farms and um, they've also had a supplementary bird feeding program which has been going excellently um, with Rothamsted they've also been able to baseline um, the soil carbon on many of the farms in the cluster um, and another exciting project is the Windrush floodplain meadow restoration project as well so just to show sort of coverage across um, the even load in the Windrush this map probably needs updating as it's constantly growing um, but this just sort of shows um, where farms have entered across our sort of Cotswold landscape. Uh, so landscape recovery, um, landscape recovery is a really incredible really really exciting opportunity um, so the cluster has been able to receive a pilot um, so we are one of 22 pilots across England um, and this is under the river and stream restoration theme it's very ambitious and it's looking at um, essentially optimising geomorphological and hydrological functions at a catchment scale, um, supporting the restoration of river dependent biodiversity and water quality and improving extreme water resilience. Um, so landscape recovery is a 20 year scheme, but at the moment we're in two years of the project development phase. Um, and in this, essentially, we're coordinating and working out what we need to be doing for our farmers to support them in terms of data, in terms of monitoring and evaluation, um, in terms of land, what we're actually going to do on farm um, and in terms of facilitating that private finance element as well. Um, so it's really exciting. You can just see here, it's quite difficult to show on the map, um, but you can see where we sort of have our plans of different environmental or habitat creation um, across the even load and also the glime and the dawn. Um, so some of the actions that we're looking at uh, are arable um, reversion to grassland. We're looking at restoring um, the river back to the floodplain, looking at paleo channel connection. Um, we're looking at increasing trees and hedgerow planting. Um, we're looking at bringing back biodiversity um, for also key species. We're looking at um, the waterfowl is really sort of our flagship um, species, um, but we're looking at sort of Duke and Burgundy, butterfly and other sort of section 41 invertebrates as well. Um, so this on the right is also a meeting that we had with sort of the heads of DEFRA and the EA um, and NE were there and we were at Blenheim at the stage zero um, project, um, just looking at that as an example of what can be done across the catchment. Um, so just sort of to touch on sort of stacking and compatibility, obviously that's a huge sort of question and we're bringing in sort of huge elements of private as well as public finance into landscape recovery. Um, so yesterday we touched about um, the various sort of soil carbon codes, the woodland carbon code, how we're going to facilitate that and bring that in, um, look at biodiversity net gain, um, some interesting conversations with various stakeholders um, of how we can get involved in offsetting that and creating habitat banks. Um, also nutrient neutrality um, and looking at water company grants as well. Um, 
So that's probably a quick summary. Um, but if you, I've got more information, but I'll just um, pause for any questions essentially.